motion, because that force is going that way, this is going to have a tendency to go back to punch and go down. That's fine. It's a reaction, not, right. and that's the issue I had with, with those guys, is they were trying to take what I would call reactionary movements and make it an intentional movement. So you're reactionary at all? I don't even know how we came up with that name. Somebody else came up, I think, came up with that name. Oh, and, so, yeah. and so that's really when you start looking at motor control, and we start looking at muscle activation within motor control, we see a totally different world than what we see in kinematics. And trying, that's been the difficulty of trying to tell the story. That's the what happens and what to do. I can tell you right now, human factors engineering approach along with your mechanics, if have you want to become a great coach, that's where it needs to be. Have you spent any time around Doc Wright? Uh, David Wright? I've heard the name before. Lower, mid, core, upper core? I've heard of it. That stuff really intrigues me. I've found a lot of the stuff. So I, I think so, but... Like, people are either stronger here, here, or here. I would say... And Phil Mickelson is more of an upper core swinger, so he has a wider lower body, and like a Dustin Johnson's a lower core swinger with a faster hip. When, when you look at human anatomy, no one breaks the part like that. That's not how we are designed by our Hey guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm at the Mike Bender Golf Academy. Tony was talking to one of the pros here, Cheryl Anderson. I can't get this off. All right, Tony was talking to one of the pros, Cheryl Anderson. So we are here uh, working on the day before the Be Better Golf School. We are here for um, the reactionary golf masterclass videos that, that we're shooting. It's going to be on uh, BeBetterGolf.com, BeBetterGolf.net slash premium. So this is it. A really amazing. I'm going to take you a little, on a little bit of a tour of this place. So this is the Players Lounge. Very, very cool area. And then this is the fitness room. And then the office and... Video review rooms. So here's uh, Mike's most famous player, Zach Johnson. So you see, just going through all the different stages of the swing here. And then that is Jonathan Bird, who Mike has worked with. Pulling one balls. So they'll do like a video review session here. Tony's setting up lunch for tomorrow now. There's a lot of pros that are, are coming here. Club fitting spot. And this is like the video station. One really, Dan's a pro here. So they have this video, uh, this like mirror station here with the, uh, they have a lot of plane boards here. So you can see the plane board there and then you see a mirror there and then these are what i really really like these megsa units here so we have one set up here right now so megsa stands for most efficient golf swing attainable so you would stand in here in this kind of jungle gym so i love uh I love training aids and this is like the ultimate training aid. So you stand in there and it's like $20,000, maybe more. You stand in there and you really work on it. And then on the other side of the range over there 
is where the famous wedge range is that Zach Johnson made famous when he uh, was hitting his wedge distances. So over the top is such a common thing. They have set this up for people. So it's really cool. It's really cool. Um, I'm going to get Tony now and we're going to do a little, I think I'm going to work on my swing a little bit and leave the, the live broadcast going. I thought Tony's going to be giving me a lesson basically. So This is really cool. So the, the, the track man back there. That's me. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to pay with a credit card. Okay. Uh, just before we leave. Sure. So that that be bad. but and then I will need an invoice. Perfect. So so, so it um, should be. I'm here today, and then Debbie's here tomorrow until twelve thirty. Twelve thirty, mm -hmm. and then nobody will be here on Friday. Okay. So okay. we can do it today or tomorrow. Okay, let's do it tomorrow. Perfect. Okay. Um, how many students total we, are there? We have, uh, so we have eight today. Eight, All right, tomorrow. Eight on Saturday, okay. nine on Sunday. So, so. Okay. As far as sessions, it's eight, eight plus nine. Okay. You know so what I'm saying? No, no. Same people, one additional, same people. Ah, person. It, one additional person on the second day. Perfect. Yeah. Got it. And then what are you guys thinking about lunch? Okay, well, we've been talking Should we get about, a platter? A, a, like well, a sandwich platter? Well, what we've been platter? talking about, which I think will work, is we get the menu here. Mm -hmm. of a place that delivers. Okay. The one deli place delivers for seven bucks delivery food. Okay. To yeah. me it was to me it was easier. Um, they can call the order in, get everybody to place the order in the morning. Yeah. We, or we can say these are the items to pick whatever we want to take a look at the menu at to keep it somewhat yeah. easy. Okay. And the order for two days Get it scheduled, have it delivered the next two days. Okay. You can do that, or, or they have a catering menu. So if you want to just get a big platter of sandwiches, or be that'd be better. Yeah. And then uh, that'd be better, I think. You want to yeah. do that? Yeah. I, I was that's up to you. Whatever sure. way you want to go. So you want to call them this afternoon and set that up? Or? No, we're going to call in the morning. Oh. Okay. Let me make sure. Yeah, what I'm thinking is just like a platter of things and they can then like put on the mustard or the mayo or whatever they want. The question is how much was the lead time for catering? Right. Yeah. If you have the number, I think we'll just call and, okay. and just like, hey, this is what we have. We need, what, food for t uh, 11 Well, the tomorrow. one guy, the one pro says he may show up. I, he broke his arm, so I'd say the 125 per day. Okay. So... <laughs> I'm not sure about this guy. Okay. Okay. All right, yeah, so we're at the Mike Bender Golf Academy, live on YouTube now. And um, just gave a little bit of a tour. And if you have any questions uh, for Tony or I, just write them in there. Uh, but basically, Tony's gonna be giving me a golf lesson and I'm gonna set this up and 
just hang back and we'll check in with you every once in a while before uh, I'm, I'm playing in about an hour, I think. So with some of the guys that are coming to the school, we're getting together near, but near here and playing. There's that. What would you like to see, Tony? What would you like to see me do? Right, or let's, try? Let's work on this. Driver backswing. still? I think we just work on level backswing. Yeah, I think so. Driver, you think, or? Uh, let's start with short, something a little shorter, okay. and then we can work on work up to the driver. Okay. We'll, we'll be a little bit more methodical and really try to grind it in, this level. Yeah. It's like when I have the, when I've put that training aid here or, you know, the stick here yeah. and I can kind of see it, it's not like a hard, like I'm staying low, but I'm not, but when there's nothing there, I'm still getting a little higher. Get a better... and, and that's, that's kind of normal because you, and this happens a lot of golfers get, um, you know, on the range and they kind of get a certain feel going. And they, they expect that feeling to automatically show up on the golf course. And it's not the case. Right. Because, you know, when we start looking at how the brain works and, and how we work, it's very situational based. So what we have here is one situation. What we have on the golf course is a totally different situation. So we have to train things here and then also be able to train them on the golf course too. So this is just part of the process. So a couple things you could do, mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and just set up and, and just kind of, you can, you can feel the shoulder working, you know, the shoulder joint working a little bit more under. You talked about keeping this angle here, that crease. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's what I'm looking for. What looking is for it that, key. what yeah. key is going to trigger the, the correct motion? And so when we first start doing this, I really want you to bring down the intensity of the swing. Okay. So keep full swing, but okay. let's just make sure the focus is what is that feeling? What is that awareness of maintaining our posture? Okay. I, could, I could touch the stick. A little bit. Which is okay. Yeah. That's a lot less movement than you, oh, than yeah. you have. Yeah. So my question is, what did you feel on the way back that is starting to make it better? It's a little slower and it was a little more screwed in a little bit. Deeper okay. and screwed in. So bit. let's see you over exaggerate that screw down and in type of motion. Over exaggerate. So now we got a re you got a really clear feeling of what that is to make that happen. Yeah, yeah. And you actually went down on that one. Okay, good. Yeah, exactly. So that's when we say, okay, now you got a good trigger, a good cue to make this happen. Let's go ahead and now give me a couple swings. With I'm gonna kind of back off a little bit now. Yeah, but I still want you to focus Same speed in. like that, just like halfway speed? Or yeah, halfway speed. speed. You can even go a little faster if you want, as long as you make it happen. I'm looking for that motion. I'm happy with that, but I need that exaggeration. I need that really screwing get, down. Okay. I actually want to see it come so, down So that's bit. like you've talked about before, like if a piece of metal is like this, yeah. and you want it to be straight, you're not just going to bend it straight, because then you'll only go halfway between what you had. You're gonna have to go like that to get it. Exactly. Okay. So that's okay. what we're doing now. We're gonna we're really gonna get low. Exactly. Like. There you go. Yep. And still feel through impact. Get nice and solid through impact. Okay. Don't get up on that heel so much. Excellent. Excellent work. I grip my teeth. I'm like feeling it. <laughs> when I think hard, I'm like, Arr. <laughs> all right. We were blessed with awesome weather today. Okay, so I'm going. Last one was pretty good, right? That was very good.
Okay, so now this is starting to tell me you're starting to get a very good idea of what to do on the way back. So would you say your movement That's like what is to do to do the exaggeration. But you're saying what no. to, that, that, that's basically what to do. That is what to do, exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. So do you feel like you're staying level, moving up, or moving down? No, I feel like direction? moving down. Yeah. So your movement down probably has to be like that for maybe two weeks. It's going to have to feel down. It has to feel down. If you don't feel down, you moved up. Because moving down is your, is your perception of staying level. Now, for you, it may be one week. It could be by the end of this weekend. So did that move down, stay level, or move up? It was a little, just slightly down, I think. Yeah. yeah. And so because it was slightly down, you actually stayed level. Okay. That was my perception moving down quite a bit. I think in reality, it moved down maybe a little. Stayed level. Okay, stayed level. Okay. <laughs> my view says stay level. The crazy thing, and maybe one of the reasons I started going up, is... When I'm here, what feels real down, I feel like I'm just gonna hit it fat. But if I get my sequence working right, it actually gives me some some lean and you know. And then as we work drive through the shot, because it's more of an upward or forward, is I think that's where when we're hitting driver, when you're hitting driver earlier, you got that forward push going. Now you start, yes, you create a room if I can and get. it's level. See, that's a level motion. Now you're not going to be going, not sticking the club in the ground. Yeah. If you were down and then turn and stay down, yeah, you would be ugly. Yeah. So you can't, you kind of have to say this, this is the system that you're swinging. You can't try this system and then put that other system in place. You can't mix up systems. We have a celebrity stopping by. Come on, come oh, on. Sure, no, sure. That's sure. not filming. Oh my God, no, I was just checking out what kind of camera you used. Oh, that's a, uh... Oh my god, that, I'm sorry. That, no. no, that's live on no. YouTube. That's, that, we're doing a live broadcast. We're that's part of our okay, so, this is so Sh This is Cheryl Anderson. Cheryl, Cheryl Anderson. Hey, everybody. LPGA Pro. Probably, what, top, top, one of the top L LPGA pros. Let's rephrase that. Top golf instructors, male or female, in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't go quite that high, but. Well, I do, I do, because we, we originally met, I think back in the Met section. Yes, exactly, long time ago. Long time We've been ago. Been down here for 10 years now. Yeah, jeez. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's where Cheryl's just, I mean, her and Mike in this facility right here is just, I mean, this, this is happening. We're very lucky. <laughs> Mike built a, a perfect place for practice. So what have you kind of seen, to kind of put you on the spot, you weren't prepared for this, but this is what happens when you walk in here. <laughs> What are some of the things that maybe you see, do women and men swing differently? Should they swing differently? Is there such a thing? I know it's kind of a loaded question, but that's what you get for walking into this environment. Well, how would I, 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 I train women differently, but I don't think they necessarily swing differently. I think it depends on where their strengths are. I see women in general have more uh, hip rotation through the ball than a lot of men. Okay. They have faster hips, but not all of them. Suzanne Pedersen, I think, swings like a man. Uh, I should say like a man. I, just, I don't know. I love her swing. Put, I love her swing. <laughs> Michelle Wee, there's different types of body types that I, I see. Okay. And I, I just find that women in general have faster hips. Yeah. It seems like w the, the women I see, and my nephew Jack does this too, it's almost like it's hard to get them to put some like violence in the swing down at the bottom, some like whoosh. Yeah. They just kind of wave at it. And no my question. nephew Jack is tall, he's like 6'1 now, and he's big, I just can't get him to put some violence into it or some, so how do we get women and people who are just kind of waving at it to really light up some speed? Yeah, turning the club upside down and swooshing, uh -huh. I find that the strongest women are the ones that have played tennis in the background, right? Okay. They played tennis in the past. Yeah, right. um, gymnasts, they okay. are able to swing the club with speed. Mm -hmm. But you're right, if they haven't had that kind of athletic background, that's how they swing very differently from the men. So I do find that I gotta get them to swish the club a lot, turn the club upside down, and get them the feeling of firing the club right at the ball. Right. Like you're gonna strike the match at the bottom kind of a sense. Um, yeah, because like you said, like I think I've seen a study that said like if you're just speaking of gross speed, the LPGA women move their hips faster than the PGA Tour men. 
but the hand speed is so different. So how do you, so you know, how just do you make the, the speed ball, actually happen to the club? Yeah. Just taking the ball and getting women to throw the ball properly. Right, yeah. I think, I don't know how about you, but just yeah. getting them to yeah. transfer that feeling. I can throw the ball pretty far for a girl, but I ask even a lot of my better uh, women athletes, they kind of throw it, they're not using their leverage properly when they throw the ball. Yeah. So getting them to kind of understand, just kind of getting all the energy out right at the ball. Yeah. You know, you're you're loading up your forces and you're trying to release them. Yeah. And that ball image of throwing it, it's kind of the same thing. You're loading it up and then trying to release it at the right moment. You know, and this is, this was not set up because this is the first time we've talked since. I just I, came over to see what kind of camera <laughs> you were using. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and all morning we've been doing the videos and is is on throwing. Oh, wow. There loading you go. up and exploding in the driver. So it just it just shows how when we start taking a look at how the club is designed and, and yes we're built a little differently, but some some things don't match. Exactly. That club delivery into the ball has to be the same whether you're swinging it or I'm swinging it to produce a shot. Cheryl, can you show us that drill? I know you guys do a lot here where it's kind of similar to what you were saying, where you hit a ball, the but then everything track? folds up and stops. Sure. But it still goes like, oh, yeah, like hits it just ninety percent as, as far. Yeah. Yeah. So what is that drill? Uh, we call it the fold up. It's really designed for that individual who gets their shoulders out racing everything, and their arms are just kind of being carried with their shoulders. So we're trying to get them to understand you got to swing the club a little bit faster right at the bottom to almost go faster than the shoulders even though it so so what's the, so show us the drill okay so you're going to swing back normal and then you're going to feel like you're bracing your lower body like we'll even put a stake in the ground to keep this knee there yeah and we get them to feel you're shifting your weight a little bit but really just swinging the club as fast as you can past your body and we want the club to fold up right on the left arm so here we go let's see how it goes i got a wedge in my hand it's a normal back swing kind of fold up yeah so my nice weight's still ball. shifting but it's giving me, me that feeling of bracing my chest so that my arms can start delivering the club to the ball right and when people first try that drill what do you usually see oh yeah right here spin out shoulders yeah right you know, they, they so haven't done it they the felt like they did it up. but they haven't done it yeah so i've got a really hold back their right shoulder I find keeping the right shoulder back and just giving them the sense of letting that club head speed up and you got to get them to to turn their forearms a little differently too because when the shoulders are kind of pulling the club through they're not really they're not rotating the shaft as they should right they're not right. twisting on the they shaft. have to hold on because it's coming over so we get them to feel like in a way exaggerating this forearm rotation okay so just getting them to twist the club and let it fold up so that this back left wrist is in that flex position huh boom yep. because then when i go into my finish from there it's pretty normal yeah yeah you guys can find out more about Cheryl. Thanks for stopping by. Ain't no Cheryl. problem. Yeah. She's the best. <laughs> Just go to mikebender.com and, and she she's listed See as one of the instructors See there. Thank you. See ya. Okay, so back to me. Uh, th thanks for watching that, guys. Uh, okay. All right, we're gonna try to. I'm gonna put this actually back here so that when you talk, you're, you're close to the camera. Okay. All right, so yeah, let's, I'm gonna hit another shot, Tony. I'm really feeling low. Okay. So I'm gonna be That's the feeling. It's yeah. wild, yeah. Yeah. It feels like I'm going from being like you know, five foot three, bent over and stuff, to to like four foot nine or something. Okay, good. But I mean, it's really low. So 
would you call that down, up, or level? That wasn't as down as I wanted to. That felt about level. That felt like it would have been level, even though I was really, I was really feeling down. So you felt down. I felt down. Okay. But that was nice and level. Okay. So that was the whole point. Is you, you're right now level to you is down. Well. Yeah. Right. Right. If I just swing, feeling leveled, I'm gonna go up. Sure. I have to feel down. like I'm swinging. Uh, like I'm getting. I have to feel about three, four inches down to be le to just to keep my head low. Exactly. Yeah. Especially like I've, I've, it's about the same, but right about here, that's when I really have to get the feeling of Good. getting lower. See, now you're really dialing into your, your awareness. That's okay. Again, we're focusing on one thing. Mm -hmm. How'd you do on the way back? Was it down level? I think or that up? was actually down. That felt extremely down. That was good. So let's let's hit about. See if we can do that now. About five balls in a row where you you go into that extreme. Okay. Good job. Good job. Okay. Fun. I would have thought if I was doing this, I would have thought I wouldn't have been able to make contact with them. I thought I, I, it feels like it's going to be fat, but it's not. It's crazy. All right, so I'm going to feel like I'm going down about three, four inches. How'd you do? Uh, I went down maybe a little. I felt like I was going down a lot, but I, not not as extreme as, as other ones. You know, I, I'm really trying to bend that steel, so I'm really going to try to get more extreme. Yeah. I'm would... going to try to feel about five inches down. Okay. Okay. Cool. That's going to be good. Now you know where the bottom is. So now you actually went down for one. Okay, okay. So that would actually be too far. That would be too much of an exaggeration. So all those, all those other ones where I felt three inches down were just level. Were just level. That one where I felt five inches down, you went actually down. went down. Exactly. Okay. So you need to be three inches down. So that's your awareness right now. And we just have to keep an eye on it you know, next couple days to make sure, do we have to adjust that? Because at some point, you're going to get accustomed to three inches. Yeah, and at some point, level is going to be level. Uh, correct, yeah. correct. But right now, yeah, it's about three. All right, so now I'm going to feel like th a little more than three inches down. Okay. You kind of went down and then back up, so that, so that wasn't smooth at all. And that's level. That's level. There's no downward motion at all. Now, Tony, what do, what do you think? Because these balls are flying very well. We're into the wind, and they're just penetrating and going really well. What do you think the connection might be to, like, impact? You well, know, the moment, the moment of truth, so to speak. So when we stay... Speak up kind of loud. Okay. So when we stay a little bit, when we stay level and we're loaded up, now we're making that, it's easier to make that forward motion because now all you're doing is going back and then going through. If you go up, yeah. now what do you have to do? Now you got to time down, now you got to go forward. That's very complicated in, in a quarter of a second. Yeah. So it just makes it easier here to here. I go here, and I gotta, how do I time that? Because now it goes up and down, becomes the predominant force in trying to get the alignment. You actually have to take this force, we'll call this x-axis, you have to take that push of that, that battery, that becomes less important because the focus now is here and here. So if I'm used to going up and then down, if I just stay level, what, what do I, you know how changes always usually have to come in twos, so what do I have to... Now, well that force 
instead of your force being more focused this Down, way, and, that, and, then, that and way. then trying to go that way, now it's here, now which way can you go? Just boom, right on through, yeah. inches down and forward. Yep. And now that, what does that do to our shaft angle at impact? You got it. Somebody just made a cool comment said, finally, a live golf channel. That'd be cool if Be Better Golf was a 24 hour live on YouTube. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. That'd be cool. No, it wouldn't. No? <laughs> you gotta sleep sometime. Well, I gotta sleep. I don't want time. Be Better Golf to be just, oh, just brand so independent all the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. The other thing too that they have on YouTube that I want to start getting into is they have streamable events. So say you release a video and it'd be like Seinfeld was on eight o'clock on Thursdays. Yeah. So this would come on and it would run that time. That would be like the first run of it. And then you could click it for whenever. Oh, cool. But like you couldn't just like zip forward on it or whatever. Gotcha. of a different topic tony because somebody who was is uh i met a there's a lot of canadians here in florida and i met a canadian who's a huge fan of mo norman as everybody probably is and he's but he's trying to swing like mo norman so he's you know doing this and he's probably you know in his late 60s um athletic guy but not you know like pretty normal and what's the connection between like if you do start like this how are you able to get chef lean? You know what I mean? Like, why, why, are, why don't we swing like this? Why aren't the clubs built like this to be, hey, that's on plane, that's on plane, that's on, like, why don't we just swing like that? Change of angles can be speed. And if I don't have a change of angle, mm -hmm. I don't have a change in speed. Okay. So if I, if I, if I go and I'm, I'm, you know, if we can say, okay, well, let's, let's lock in the arms and the body and let's the big torso do the work. Well, I can do that. I can put this perfectly on a one-plane swing. How fast can I actually move that golf club? Not yeah. Very. Yeah. I need change of angles. I need elevation in order to create speed. This gives me now a greater distance and time to accelerate and create more club head speed. So we want to, in a sense, create angles, lose angles. Okay. Oh. What time is it now? Okay. Okay, good. Let's go to the chat. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Stephen. Somebody said 1230 in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Question All right. out there? Yeah, somebody's saying, like, so it, without a teacher with you, if you guys have any good questions, just write them. But if they're saying without a teacher with you, if they're getting higher, you know, what's a good way to check it? I got some good technology we can we'll eventually release, but I would, we got to get some sort of feedback. Uh, you could do shadow drills. Okay, so, so the sun's so, behind me here. The sun's behind you. I have a rope there. You have the rope. And you have to make sure you get your alignments correct. So go ahead and now. Well, I would be going like that way. Yep. Or I guess, well, yeah, to be able to see. So. Yeah, you there you go. See it. Okay. Okay, go ahead and make your backswing. This is, I'm going to make what feels like a normal backswing. Okay. Now, is that down or is that no, level? No, that was normal. But... So so maybe get, yeah, yeah. This. Always try to get yourself kind of in line with the sun. So your so body is perfect. There. So, oh, so it's not the rope. We need to put this to be able to see what yeah. it is. So then we have an alignment stick down here. There you go. Get yourself cool. so you're, you're basically, if the sun's razor here, you keep yourself perfect. So check this out, guys. So Tony, hold this and this and point it at that orange stick. Okay. See on the screen. 
All right, so the sun's right behind me. I have a, a stick down there about where my head is gonna be. Right. Now I'm gonna make a backswing. This feels normal to me. And if that's normal, you can see the shadow. Look at the shadow now. So pass the stick. Okay, so now on this one, go ahead and get set up, close your eyes, mm -hmm. and make a downward motion backswing, that three inch downward motion. Okay, now open your eyes. Yeah. So that's the feeling you're going to need to have is you actually have to move down. Yeah, I now, think one of the things we could yeah. work on that we were talking about with Andre is me making this lower move and uh, in slow motion, you know? Yeah. Where I'm really feeling down. Because it's going to take a few, it's going to take some time for you to over exaggerate this. We know that three inches, that, that's a good perspective for you to make that change. That, that's a good awareness for you. So that's something that you want to go ahead and keep doing. And again, make sure the stance doesn't get too wide. That looks good. And just drill this down three inches. That's the feeling. Does that look crazy down? It's going down finally. Okay. Finally it's going down. So you, you know, and the thing is, you know, that's where everyone's gonna be a little bit different. Depending on your current skill level, you may have to over exaggerate it and that's the nice thing about the cameras now is we can we can check that re pretty quick. And what you would want to do is go and say, okay, this one is you want to put a number to it. Yeah. So in your case, My you're, feeling, yeah. you're feeling is a three, yeah. is three inches down. Yeah. Put a number to it, record it, come and check it. You know. Yeah, matching up feeling real. Yep. So this is gonna be feel three inches down. Kind of spun out a little bit on that one. My down was okay. I yeah, felt like yeah, it's looking a lot better. Now, other than so, other than aesthetics and just not looking up, it's actually like because if you know our wives were watching my golf swing, they would say, "Well, you could do that more often and hit the ball square than." going here and then trying to do it you know right exactly just making it easier on myself yep all right the one thing i have trouble with the swing bottom sometimes is the three wood so this is the three wood guys so i'm going to try the same feeling with this with such a long club that's not getting off the turf i really get scared of uh fatting it so uh, maybe that's one of the reasons that would come up so we'll see how it works here so same thing tony for you same inches. same thing i want to say right now yeah Like a nice little draw. Yeah, I'm, still, I'm still watching that. That was good. Yep. That was fun. So a lot of I think you had to happy was your reaction to the upward motion. Yeah, a fat swing bottom would be like, yeah, I go up, so and my body knows you're up. You're way too up. Yeah, you got to go down. The other thing I want to ask you now too is. Because I, I was seeing, when I was concentrating on keeping my level better, I was wobbling less. And I was wondering if, when I go up, if my brain realizes that I'm up, so it's changing the shaft angle, and then I go down again, and then it's changing it again. And whether... Something's happening so this, Yeah, let's take a look at it. Uh, here, let me flip it that way. That way, that's easier Let's for take you. a look. Here. So I haven't really so focused haven't in really on it. haven't thought about the, the wobble yet. No. So see if... The, chain, the golf swing changes that I like the most, there's like 
when are the like unexpected benefits, you know, like you do right. one thing and then other things get better without you having to like actually work on it. Yep, that's that those are the best ones. So three inches down. A little off in transition. That one you kind of spun left on. But that still didn't look as much as I've seen in the past. Yeah, before I'm here, I'm that way. Yeah. So be, I think Justin Thomas right now does the best example of yep. changing directions without. Tiger's, Tiger's getting better at it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, Tiger in uh, 2000 was the best example. Yep, okay, so you got two things to do now. This is going to be challenging. And so right now, I'm going to say that's too much, too close together. Yeah, like we're having to do the, the down and, and, and fix this. Fix that. So it's one of those things that I would rather have you, I can't read this, um, one of the comments, but I would rather have you focus in on one thing right now, which is the posture. Yeah. And then work on. Okay, let's go to your guys' comments if we. I thought I saw one. There's more upper body extension than then shoulder. Yep. Yeah, some people, like some teachers say that they look at Jamie Sadlowski who does go up in the backswing. If, for a guy that can't get much shoulder turn, some, some teachers say, well, you should stand up and rotate. Standing up will help you rotate more. Well, let, we yeah. were talking about shoulder turn. I have turn. a lot of flexibility. Yeah, so... so. I don't, that's the reason why when we originally started working on stuff, we didn't, I wasn't worried about the up and down motion yeah. because we're working on where the golf club has to go. Yeah. So this is where people got to start realizing that I can have a shoulder joint movement and not move my torso. Okay. So one of the things in, in um, show that to us. For, okay. Tony, so Tony said you can so move your every, shoulder. Everyone talks about the shoulder turn. Here's the shoulder turn. My shoulder joint is Okay, abducting away from my spine. I'm not moving my torso. So really, the torso is moving the shoulder joints. The shoulder joints are part of the arm. So it's a torso turn. So it's a torso turn, upper body torso turn. You know, and depending on your range of motion, that's the reason why I'd rather see the arms fold and bend, the levia arm even, in order to get that position. Do I want to go in hyperextension? Well, if I don't have the flexibility in rotation, I'm not going to have the flexibility in an extension that just puts a lot more torque on me because that means my posture is just off so getting more standing up more is to okay. get more shoulder turn is to, to get into a better position uh, a deeper or better position yeah. to give us optimal time on the way down that's fine that's yeah. the reason why with your swing it was not a priority but as you develop improved your, your downswing transition mm -hmm. yeah now we can start going to the next refinement Jack Grout told Jack Nicholas, "Reach for the sky, Jackie, in the backswing, and to get the hands." Or what's your what's your thought on that, Tony? As far as high hands on the backswing and and being more high. I mean, to me, I like it. Yeah. I, I do not. I think one of the worst things that people have ever done was stick something in between the elbows and keep you down. Yeah. Because I would never be able to throw keep your, a ball. Your elbows elbow pinched in, pinched and, in yeah. and and connected. Mm -hmm. I, I know it killed my golf swing. Even the towel under both arms. Oh, you yeah. don't need it. You know, when we look at muscle activation on the way down, the pecs are, are the most active muscles in the upper body right here. That is what's actively firing. There's connection. I don't need, my shoulder joints are the connection. So in order to kind of maximize, I have to eccentrically load this. And this is this flying right elbow, but that high hand. So whether it's a, a Bubba Watson. Yeah. You know, Jack Nicholas. John Daly. John Daly. Yeah. Jamie Sadlowski. Yeah, you don't see, you've, you know, been around a lot of world long drive events. You don't see a lot of uh, low backswings, like I, top I, of backswing I, I, positions. I would love to see Joe Miller swing like Matt Kuchar's old swing on one plane and try to win a long drive contest. That right. would be just hilarious. It never will happen. Yeah. You can't be on one plane and expect club head speed. Yeah. I'll flip this around. 
Yeah, Fred Couples said, but somebody also does that. Yeah, Freddie. Yeah, another guy. Let the arms go. I know you you done some work uh, a long time ago with John Daly, and he's always so much into like chipping and pitching around around and hitting like 50 yard shots with just his left arm only. What is he doing when he's doing that? And I know, cause I know you're so into the right arm. Right. I would say, you know, my time with John was, was really, he was a pure player at that point. Mm -hmm. There, there was no thought about mechanics Nothing. and do this and that. It wasn't, it was really grip it and rip it. And let's, this is what I want the ball to do. And this is what the swing feels like in order to make that happen. Well, one of the interesting things you said, like when we were talking about Rory McIlroy saying he really feels the body, the, the, the power coming from his lower body is like, one of the reasons it's hard to take tips from pros because you were saying something about how Rory might be getting, be so good with his arms that he has to feel something else. What were you saying that? You, you gonna, hard to take tips. Yeah, you're going to feel the kind of the, the weakest skill level or the weak point of the swing that you have to really focus on to make it in sync. So, you know, our, Rory's arm swing is just so good that it's it's already automatic. He's learned that skill. That looked really good. And and so it's one of those things as a tour player, they're not thinking about their arm swing. They may be aware of the golf club. So like they've already that's taken that's care taken of that's care of. in the program. Yeah. So now in order to keep that momentum, to keep that arm swing going, I have to do something with my body because why? My shoulder joints are to the side of my body. And so in order to carry my right shoulder joint and my right hip joint through the swing, I got to move my body. So I get what they say because I feel the same thing. I don't feel my arm swing, but I have to be aware of my body motion through impact. That's, the, you know, driving through to create the right alignment. All right, this is, I'm going to try not to think too much. So that one you moved up a little bit. Yeah. So it it's just got to be a conscious. It's got to be yeah. conscious down right now. And I would say, yeah, the more you moved up, now you got to make that downward movement. The more of a spiral we saw uh, in your downswing. The more I moved up, the more it just would do this. Exactly. And the more I stayed level, the more I can go forward. Exactly. So now we've really decreased the variables. The number of variables you have to coordinate. So different. Oh, I killed that ball. So different. So right now, yeah. All right, so Tony, let's talk a little bit about taking it from the range to the course. I'm about to go play golf with some Be Better golfers coming up soon. So how can people, because everybody who's watching YouTube golf videos is, uh, because you've seen Be Better Golfers show up to your lesson team in Mississippi, and it's a lot of tips and thoughts. So how do we turn the volume down a little bit and actually get to play golf a little bit? So for you, you're going to have to be aware of your downward motion. That's something that's going to happen, yeah. You have to. I would say because this isn't a money match or anything else like that, you have to kind of be a little bit more mechanical with your swing thought because we want to keep those changes going. So I want it being drilled down. Yeah. But then it's like, okay, before we get to that, it was what what is the shot what are we trying to do with the shot so now it's like there's the shot okay then there's the shot pattern that's it and you just do that so now let's say i want to hit the fade there's the shot there's my mental model this is part of the uh that game um acronym goal of the shot assess everything and what is your mental model what do you have to do to make changes to create the shot you want and so your mental model is three inches down mm -hmm. and then produce in whatever direction you want to on the way for the shot pattern. okay i'm going to try that out all right so so three inches down and then kind of like a shot tracer exactly and then the last part is that you know evaluate it you know is just execute it and then eva evaluate it all right so here like if this is a tee shot Kind of windy, so I, I want to hit it like I want to hit a low straight ball, really. Okay. And uh, I want to go at that red square out there. Got it. So now, yeah, what I'm gonna feel is screwed down, and then that I'm gonna see a line going straight to that square. Okay, perfect. Did that 
happens a lot. Like you talk about that, that top shot a lot in golf, and you almost say it's almost always from one thing. Yeah. You now let's let's review what your mental model was. You screwed it down and pushed it forward. Yeah. You forgot the golf club. So when you push it forward, it down and forward, and you move forward, but you didn't bring the golf club with you. Okay. And so it got out of sequence. Okay. So the, that's where the body went first, and then the arms and clubs were trying to catch up. So we still have to keep the sequence within that mental model. Okay. So it's going to be screw it down, and then, and then. Then, then show me you're pushing. Yeah, remember how you talked earlier about you said about push. pushing. Yeah. You just forgot the push. You right. you did the push with your body, but you didn't do the push with the with your okay, arms so swinging. Right it off. now, it's just not enough to screw it down and just imagine the picture. I've got it. Yes, yeah, so you've got to make it happen. That's pretty good. That trajectory's a lot lower. It was a little bit off. He was off the heel. So. Just a little bit, but that's in play, and that would be a good knockdown three wood shot right, right there. So then, if we're getting ready to play golf, then this is a nine iron after a good shot. Right at that same square. Okay. One of the things that I think is really important before I go play for me is uh, to almost like kind of properly cal calibrate my alignment. Yep. Further out, I can walk something. The more to the right it looks, you know. Yeah. That stick. If I put this stick there, it's it's 30 yards right of that square that I'm going at. Okay. You know, because I'm standing on this side. Yep. Exactly. No, that's a great that's a great tip for golfers. If I stand right here, it's perfectly in line. But if I move here, now that orange stick is way out to the right. And so what would happen if you aimed at the orange stick with your body? Right, I would hit it 30 yards right if I hit it straight, or I would come over it to try to get it back. And that's where a lot of golfers, because of misalignment, create some uh, bad habits in their swing because of, the, because of that, simply because of that. So, screw it down. There you go. Came up a little bit on that one. So you, you're screwing down, you can see it has to be the priority. Okay. Yeah, and right now it's really got to feel extreme. So it may be three and a half. On the golf course, it could be four. Check your, uh, you can check that with your shadow easily. That was better. And that was a good swing. That's just the wind kind of taking that yeah. ball left. And just keep pushing it down. Okay, guys, thanks for watching this little live broadcast. We'll just do a quick scrolling for comments here before we uh, check off. My arms are pretty long, and I struggle to feel any elevation with the arms. This causing, causes a wraparound body. Okay. Should I manufacture some arm lift? Yes, the right arm's not doing its job, though. Because okay. the right arm is what's going to make it easier to push it up to create the elevation. If I want to go ahead and this is a pretty heavy bag, but if I want to lift this over my head, I'm not going to do it with the straight arm, but I could do it with the bent arm pretty easily. Uh. Okay, I try to do that with my left arm. <laughs> yeah, right. No one's going to have. It's just a weaker alignment. So it's that right arm so it's control. The right arm has to lift that club up. If you try right. to do it with your left, it won't work. It's always going to wrap around you. It's always going to wrap around you. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Click the subscribe right. button. If you want to see more live broadcasts like this, or if you're watching this when it was on the repeat, um, and you want to see the live broadcast, which we'll be doing quite a few of these during the school, uh, you have to click the little bell, the notification button. Tony is at reactionarygolf.com, and he's also on YouTube at Tony Lusak Golf. It's just do Tony Lusak Golf on the search bar, you'll see him. All right, see you later. Bye.